Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all around hiring guru. And I have a really special guest today because this is a topic I've got a lot of questions about as we move forward with some of these Green New Deals and you know just talking about renewable energy. So I am going to introduce you to, I'd like to welcome on the show today, Mohammed Abdallah, founder of and CEO of Good Faith Energy. Since 2014, Mo has led Good Faith Energy's efforts to build a large diversified portfolio of distributed solar energy storage, electric vehicle charging and roofing projects. We're gonna get into all of that. His vision is to transform our energy ecosystem with smart, sustainable, reliable, we need that technology while providing lasting social and environmental impact. Thanks for joining us today, Mo. Thanks for having me, Casey. It's great to be here. It is so wonderful. And I really do have a lot of questions around this. But before we dig into the topic, my very first question that I like to ask on the show is, how did we get connected? How did we get connected? Well, I have this wonderful HR manager. Her name is Kathy Perez. <laughs> Kathy uh, knows my penchant for a hiring good, qualified hardworking, uh, high integrity professionals. And she recommended you because as you mentioned earlier, you're the recruitment guru. And uh, it's been great. It's been great getting to, to meet you, getting to meet your team, uh, learning more about what you guys do and, and your expertise. Uh, and so far, I've had a really great time, you know, getting to know you and your team. So thank you. Well, I really hope that continues. Yes, I, <laughs> I wouldn't want to make Kathy mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. Yeah. I love I that. You know, and I love the reason I asked that question is because I think it's so important to talk about your connections, your network, your relationships that you build over the years. And, you know, I started working with Kathy at a prior company um, almost 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. and just really stayed in touch. And it's really evolved into more than just, you know, I'm her recruiter. I mean, I seriously, when I introduce her to people now, it's friend first, mm -hmm. then, oh, and by the way, she's my client too, you know? Well, and that's one of the beautiful things about, you know, relationship business. It's not just about a transaction. It's mm -hmm. really about building real meaningful, deep uh, relationships mm -hmm. with the people that you do business with, that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, Kathy is definitely one of those people. I've enjoyed uh, working with her for the last, I think, two years now, maybe maybe longer. Um, two years and two months. I just yeah. asked that okay. question All earlier. Right. Awesome. <laughs> I, was, I was close. <laughs> you, were, you were so close, which yeah. is a really great sign of a good leader. Because a lot of people may not have known that about their employees. Well, and it's not like you only have five. Absolutely. And, and one of the things is I've learned a lot about leadership from the people that I've surrounded myself with and uh, that have come into my life and, and my world. Uh, and so when I started the company, I was 24, 25 years old. I knew very little about leadership. And I think leadership is a lifelong journey. It's not something that you just wake up one day and, and you just know how to become a leader. And, and I think uh, the term, you know, uh, oh, you're a natural leader is a little bit misleading because yeah, there's, there's, you know, certain qualities that you can have, uh, but leadership is something that you really mature into and develop and, and it's, it's a, a ever evolutionizing, you know, a journey. So, uh, you wake up one day, you think you're a great leader. And then a year later you realize you still have so much more to learn about leadership. And, uh, that's, that's what it's been like. So, um, you know, one of the things that I've learned from Kathy is, uh, the importance of knowing uh, how long your employees have been around and she's constantly, uh, putting out messages in our in our group, uh, you know, our, our company Slack channel. Uh, congrats to so and so on their one year, two year, three year anniversary. And I may not respond to all the happy birthday Slack messages, but I definitely uh, like to message people on their on their uh, anniversary to thank them, to tell them, you know, I appreciate uh, your sacrifices, your hard work, uh, yes. your 
dedication to good faith energy. I think that's that's an important uh, attribute to, to showcase as a leader. And I think that when you do those little things, like for example, um, we were actually just acquired. Big announcement. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. And one of the things that we just got um, in like literally like two or three weeks ago, we were required, acquired by another company and they're not, you know, rolling us up into their company directly. They're creating what they're calling a portfolio of companies. Mm -hmm. And, but what I wanted to tell you was we got our first June birthday wishes. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun because the birthday wishes come from the CEO's dog. <laughs> I was like, this yeah. is awesome. And the company mascot. Yeah. That's and wonderful. then they roll through. They have a whole slideshow of mm. all the birthdays for the month. And I'm like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we've always celebrated birthdays at VIP. But, you know, we have, you know, like once a month, we'll have our, like our little celebration gathering. And mm -hmm. it might be birthdays. It might be how long you've been with the company. But... Mm -hmm. It makes it's little things like that. We get cookies, and it makes me feel special, you know. Definitely, every every little thing that you can do, it's it's the little things that matter. I mean, it sounds super cliche, but um, people want to be, uh, they want to feel like uh, they're cared about. Yeah. And um, you know, your birthday is one of the the you know simplest ways to show somebody that uh, they're special. And uh, you know, we're we're all special in one way or another. Um, and on your birthday, you really feel that. And for me. I see your work anniversary as the most special moment of the year. Mm. I mean, that's from, from my lens. Yeah. Um, because, because that's the day where, you know, our worlds collided and uh, we decided to consciously work together every single day. And um, it's special. I like how you describe that. Our worlds collided. Yeah. Isn't that like a Kenny Rogers song or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about you because I know when I first met you, we were actually coming to meet you in, you know, a client relationship to help you with a search. And I was like, whoa, this guy is so interesting. So share a little bit about your journey to creating good faith. Why renewable energy? Why are, why are you doing this? Great question, Casey. So I'm just going to take you back in time a little bit and, um, you know, explain to the audience to uh, my background. My parents are both first generation um, immigrants. They moved here from Egypt. And uh, first, my, my father, uh, he landed a job in Canada. So I was born in Canada and I lived there until I was about five years old. And then uh, he landed a job in Richardson, Texas, moved the whole family down here. So I'm one of five, five kids. And I'm smack in the middle, um, three of five. Oh, no, middle child syndrome. That's right. I got, I got it. <laughs> I'm bad. the oldest. I got you. Yeah. Why, why do you think I'm loving this attention so much? So um, we, uh, I, I went through the Plano Independent School District, graduated from Plano Senior High. Uh, my, my father passed away when I was nine years old. Mm. And I think that that uh, life experience molded me a lot uh, into who I am. My mom at the time, uh, she could barely speak English. Uh, she had never worked a job in her life. Uh, she was completely dependent on my father. And so we uh, really became young adults very early on in life. We looked after one another. Uh, my siblings and I, my older brother was, was pretty much my father, my protector, my mentor. And uh, my older sister, who, who now works for me, funny enough, um, she uh, really w was the person that I think I learned the most from, her, her level of empathy, uh, her level of emotional intelligence. Um, so, you know, that all those experiences, uh, you know, required from me uh, entrepreneurship. I was an entrepreneur from a very young age. I was uh, constantly buying and selling things, whether it be, you know, uh, on the internet to my friends, uh, door to door selling candy kebabs. I was doing all, all types of crazy things when I was a kid. And I think society kind of drives this uh, expectation uh, of the status quo. You know, um, I thought, okay, you know, I need to go to college and then I got a college degree and, you know, and then I went and worked uh, in corporate America and I sort of lost that sense of identity in a way. Uh, where I kind of forgot uh, what I was, what my super strength was, which was really uh, building great relationships and, um, you know, doing things in a really high integrity manner. And, and whenever I found jobs, I always had conflicts in those jobs because internally I had this moral compass that was telling me that something about my work and, and life purpose uh, wasn't really aligned. And so, um, you know, I got fired from Best Buy because I was, uh, 
you know, telling people on the printer aisle to buy their printer from here, but to buy the cables uh, online because we overcharged for cables. And so my, my manager overheard that and didn't like it very much. And then uh, when I worked in the, in the oil and gas industry, I had this moral dilemma uh, around uh, emissions. You know, it was really uh, during the shale boom and there were methane flares that we were uh, flaring, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I was constantly asking my managers, like, is there a better way to utilize this natural gas? Can we pipe it? Can we reuse it on site to power our sites? And, you know, the company would celebrate how we could now see Central Texas from outer space uh, because of all the flares that we were burning. So, you know, I was I was kind of the, the odd man out because I was constantly asking questions about these open waste water pits and, uh, you know, hydraulic fracturing and, and uh, you know, sooner um, than I expected, I found myself out of work. Uh, and, um, and so Good Faith Energy was sprung about from me desiring to align my uh, morals and principles in life with uh, my work. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that um, renewable energy is uh, good for the planet and uh, way more faithful towards it as well. And, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that, um, you know, there aren't pros and cons to renewable energy mm -hmm. because there are just like there is everything uh, in this world. Uh, but I definitely think that the faster uh, society and, and, and uh, us as a human collective can uh, transition to uh, renewable energies, uh, not only make us uh, more sustainable, but also make us uh, way more resilient as a society. Wow. You know, I mean, you hear about people that talk about they have to go to work, um, you know, where their values are in conflict with the company or with mm -hmm. what they're doing. And one of the things I hear from candidates quite a bit, you know, when I'm talking to them, and I think I even mentioned this on the last podcast I did, is that they really want to work for a company that aligns with their values, mm -hmm. that they are passionate about serving, that they feel like they're putting some good out in the world by mm -hmm. going to work every single day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what you feel like you do. Definitely. And I would yeah. imagine that the people that you select, that you collide with, mm -hmm probably feel the same way. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, to a large extent, our, our parents didn't really have that luxury. Um, they, you know, they came from overseas, they found jobs and their primary focus was how do I uh, provide for mm -hmm. my family? They didn't really have the luxury of, you know, uh, taking it back a notch and, and, and you know, zooming out and, and thinking about alignment of values and morals and principles. Whereas I think my generation, uh, we have a lot more, um, I don't know, I don't know if flexibility is the right word, but I, I think we, we're just more conscious of the fact that there's a lot of jobs out there. Uh, there's a lot of different career paths that you can go, uh, go on, but, uh, which ones align the most with, uh, what you believe in is, is the, is the future world that you want to be a part of. And so again, you know, our parents did the best that they could and their, their primary focus was to just get us through school and get us educated and uh, make sure we, we, we stayed alive. And I'm a parent now, so I understand that, but um, it's, it's nice. And I'm sure you see this every day because you're dealing with, you know, people from my generation or, or younger and, and some, some older folks as well, but they're, they're wanting to make sure that their work isn't just being lost, that at the mm -hmm. end of their career, they can look back at their career and say, wow, like I had a real purpose. Mm -hmm. I had a real impact. Uh, and, um, and, and that's, what's I think really, uh, I, I, it's special because, uh, you know, if you if you look back 30, 40 years at your career and you just feel like you did nothing impactful, you're really going to feel some level of, of regret or resentment. You know, and I couldn't agree more. I would say my first career, and I think I shared this with you, I'm on my second career. I was so misaligned in my first career. Mm -hmm. And I talk about it a lot because I think it's important for people to know that they have permission to make a change, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So what, you did it for 20 years mm -hmm. and you're figuring out it's not right. Now, mm -hmm. if you, can, even if you have to do it as a side hustle for a little bit, mm -hmm. take that leap of faith and mm -hmm. really get aligned with what your purpose and your passion is. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you don't, it's going to be a struggle every single day to get up and go to work. That's right. And that's not fun. No. Who wants to do that? No, it's not. And some people bury, you know, I had a, a client meeting where, um, I went and visited two clients that, um, had finished their solar and battery installation with us. 
and they had both worked for Lockheed Martin their entire career. And uh, I'm not throwing shade on any corporation out there, but I just, I couldn't help but ask them the questions, the kind of the tough questions mm -hmm. that they probably haven't heard or, or been asked in, in a long time. And I just said, you know, did you guys ever have like that moral conflict that your work product was resulting in, you know, deaths throughout the world and war and uh, conflict? And, you know, the, the husband tried to, to downplay it and the wife actually broke down in the middle of our, our meeting and started crying. And, you know, wow. I immediately, I immediately was like, God, Mo, you couldn't have just, <laughs> you couldn't have just installed just, the equipment. Exactly. And not said anything, but I think, uh, people bury it and, uh, they might think about it for the first month or six month or, or year or two years. And then eventually they become kind of numb to it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then at the end of their career, when, when it's brought up again, they start thinking about all those years that they spent, you know, building whatever jets and weapons and, and, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, and I, I can't help but, but believe that they, there's a level of regret and resentment. It's legacy. Yeah. What do you want your legacy to be? Absolutely. And I, not that my first career wouldn't have had a legacy. I mean, I was helping schools. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's good, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really my passion. I mean, I'm, I like kids so, mm -hmm. a little. <laughs> I don't want any more, <laughs> but, um, you know, but it just really wasn't my passion. But when I moved into recruiting and I started being able to work with people like Kathy and with you, people like you, but even on the Canada side, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, and this is going to go a little deep for just a moment, but this is what I get to do. This is how I get to help people. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a candidate that had taken a break. And so mm -hmm. my first question is because I'm going to get asked by the client, mm -hmm. you know, why hasn't this person worked for the last nine months? Mm -hmm. And this person broke down on the phone with me and I'm going to, I would probably, I hope I don't cry, but these are the mm -hmm. kind of stories I have to share. Mm -hmm. Her son was murdered. Mm. Wow. And she was talking to me. She's like, well, mm. I had two sons. And at first I heard that had, and I'm like, mm. all right, mm. let's see if she's going to open up. If she needs to talk about this, I'm a recruiter, mm -hmm. you know, but I still, you're also kind of an that. emotional coach. Yeah. Mm. And, she finally shared with me what had happened. And she's like, so I'm just now getting to a place where I can go back to work mm. and I don't know how to address this. Mm. And so we have been working really, really hard on her story mm. on how she addresses it, how she puts it on her resume when she's not going through a recruiter. Mm. But more importantly, mm. I get to be her champion to the clients mm -hmm. and say, let me tell you why she took some time off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me give you the real about this person. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're in the people business Yeah, and, uh, they, they say that about all businesses, but, but truth, truthfully, this is the people business mm -hmm. when you're sourcing employment opportunities for people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, to a certain extent, you know, you're a therapist, you're an emotional coach, you're a career coach, you're a recruiter. Um, you're working on behalf of your clients, you're working on behalf of your, your, uh, and your clients are, are both the candidates and the corporations and the employers. And so um, I think that it's a transfor transformational position because uh, people are at this critical juncture in their life, like, what should I do now? Um, and you can either send them, you know, off to Mars or you can send them, <laughs> you know, to, to a real opportunity yeah. that transforms the future of, uh, of them and their families. And I'm honored, you know, my tagline is changing people's lives one job at a time. I love that. And I love that I get to help people find that right next opportunity. And sometimes it's not still in accounting and finance, which is what I focus on, mm -hmm. but that's what I want to know because I don't want anybody to be misaligned. I don't want anybody to be miserable, mm -hmm. but I, I took a peek at your core values mm -hmm. for good faith. Okay. And I really feel like our values are very similar. Um, and so I read, I mm -hmm. hope these are correct on your website. If not, you need to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Core values are respect, integrity, service, and excellence. So what does this mean to you? Yeah. So I think, I think everything starts with a level of, of mutual respect, you know, um, showing up to work every day. I respect you regardless of your uh, background, your faith, um, what you've been through in life. Uh, even if we disagree on nine out of 10 subjects or 10 out of 10 subjects, um, there still has to be a level of respect uh, shown by both parties. Mm -hmm. The second that 
uh, respect is lost uh, in a conversation, in a setting, in an organization environment. Uh, that's when um, you know empathy gets lost. So I think uh, respect is is very important to me, and I think most people can agree that when they feel disrespected, uh, there's a, a real level again of, of resentment, anger. Um, uh, they may show it, they may not show it, and bury it, you know, under their skin, but. Um, it comes out at some point. And so uh, respect to me is very important. Everyone in the organization needs to respect each other. Um, you know, sure, you know, you can argue, you can debate, uh, you can not see eye to eye, but you need to maintain a level of respect. Uh, so that, that's, that's where that comes from. Integrity, as you know, is uh, doing what's right even when no one's watching. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, very difficult for a lot of people in the business world because uh, people can get uh, lost in the dollar. And, um, you know, I, I've always said things like, uh, I, I believe in truth over profits. I believe in people over profits. Um, you know, obviously you need to have some level of financial sustainability to continue to operate your organization, but uh, I'll, I'll never do it at the expense of uh, the right thing. I love that. And, um, and so, you know, service really is, is important to us. If you just take one quick peek at our uh, reviews, you'll see that uh, we have over 500 five-star reviews with a five-star rating on Google. That's and, impressive. Um, Let's that's just very, take a moment and say, That's good almost job. impossible you yeah. know, uh, to, to have as a contractor. You know, as a contractor, uh, most people have been burned by a contractor, uh, either cutting corners, taking their money and running off with it, um, uh, over-promising and under-delivering. So I tell people all the time, you know, uh, my reviews are... Uh, the reputation. Reputation mm. is how you see me, but character is how I view myself. Ooh. And uh, you know, the the character, your character is uh, based based on your core values. And so, if I believe in service, if I believe in servant leadership, if I'm active as a leader, uh, I literally am the first person to see a five star review and the first person to see a one star review. And um, we built a culture where, like, literally, we got a one star review a day or two ago. And it was from a lady that uh, had bought solar from someone else and needed help with service. And then she didn't like uh, that we were unable to service her because of um, the experience that we knew she would end up having. So we were like, we told her, if we end up servicing this product, it's going to fail. And then we're going to come out there and charge you again for it. And then you're going to be unhappy with mm -hmm. it. And I don't want you to uh, go through that turmoil of just making this a money pit. And what's funny is before I even had a chance to address that person, uh, five people within my organization were talking about the one-star review. They were all um, you know, game planning on how they were going to reach out to her and communicate why we were unable to service her. Uh, and by the time I had finished up my, my meetings, the one-star review was, was off the web. Wow, so, that's a great team. <laughs> it is an incredible team. But that's team. a testimony again to your leadership. And, 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 and leadership is, is only a reflection of, of the people that are around you because they mold you into the leader that you are. And so uh, it's been incredible to see uh, how, how much people care within the organization about uh, communicating that we are servant leaders and we do not want you to just throw money at a problem only to throw more money and more money and other businesses would jump at the bit you know to take your dollar whereas we don't want you to have a bad experience and then to end up bad mouthing solar and and saying it's 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 a t terrible it's a scam uh there's already enough bad contractors mm -hmm. out there uh we're really trying to do the work uh of cleaning up a lot of those messes uh, and then lastly, excellence. Like I have a really hard time working with people that can't deliver an excellent work product. Uh, so I tell people from the very beginning, like I look for employees with a high work ethic uh, that believe in, in delivering an excellent work product because like it's just not in my DNA to uh, deliver like a half, you know what, uh, work product. Yep. And so, um, I can't, I can't, I can't work with you if you're not focused on delivering something that that's excellent. I have, to, I just thought of something that I have to share with you. Sure. So my dad is, he's a electrical engineer by trade, but absolute genius, mm -hmm. literally Mensa certified genius. Wow. 
and we call him the mad scientist. Mm -hmm. And all this talk about electricity, I just remembered my dad was trying to build an electric car like 30 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. And he still yeah. has the prototype out in the garage today. Oh, and I'm sure he's still working on it. Oh, he tinkers with everything. <laughs> I walked into his like yeah. closet the other day and it has it's on like these double doors and you know when you open it all the lights come on and I'm like mm. How did you get all this stuff, Dad? Yeah. What are we going to do with it when you die? <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> That's what engineers do. You oh, know? Yeah, It's they, crazy. They, they tinker a lot. Oh, he does. He yeah. definitely does. He's always working on something. So exciting. You have a partnership with Tesla. Yes. How did, and that, I mean, to me, when I hear Tesla and I'm thinking Elon Musk, I'm like, whoa. How did that happen? So um, again, a lot of the uh, the lo a lot of the focus that I had in the early days were on relationships, and so I I, I would fly out to certain manufacturers, um, vendors, partners, and I would just network, and I tell them, you know, if you need somebody in the DFW region that you can trust, that you can rely on, depend on to uh, do the right thing, to deliver a good work product give us a call. And so there was a gentleman named Sean Parnell, and I'm still in touch with Sean. He's a buddy of mine. Uh, he worked for a company and um, a year and a half later, I asked him, hey man, like, what are you up to? I ran into him uh, on the trade floor and he was like, uh, I'm, oh, I'm working for Tesla now. And I was like, dude, like, get, get me in. You know? like, I'll do <laughs> This anything. is the power of connections I'll, and networks. It is, it is. And I was like, I'll sweep the floor, I'll scrub the toilets, like <laughs> tell me what I have to do to build a relationship with Tesla. And so um, he went back to, to his office. He introduced me to, at the time, uh, uh, the home charging partner or the or program manager. And so um, I literally started at the bottom where when you bought a Tesla electric vehicle, um, you know, Tesla would say, by the way, you're going to need a charger at your home to charge your vehicle. So go to our website, you know, Tesla, find an electrician and you'll find all of our certified partners. So um, at the time I was trying to sell solar systems, but I wanted to get in with Tesla any way I could. Uh, so we got listed in their home charging pro uh, program and my uh, strategy was always to just have the best reputation, the best reviews. So I would go out, do a job for a guy, install a charger, um, get a five star review, uh, do it over and over and over again, uh, wash, rinse, repeat. And so eventually uh, there was a company in Dallas called Treehouse and uh, they've uh, subsequently shut down but Treehouse was like an eco-friendly Home Depot store. Okay. So you could walk in, buy like an energy-efficient fan or buy like a, I don't know, energy-efficient water heater, stuff like that. And they were selling Tesla power walls. So when they did their grand opening, I did a cold walk-in and I was like, who's your installer for the, the power wall? And they were like, well, we don't have one yet. <laughs> so um, that's how that relationship started. So I got into the home charging program. Then I became a, a Tesla certified Powerwall installer. Uh, then when that company went belly up, I reached out to Tesla and said, can I be your reseller in the area? So I picked up the reseller certification. Uh, and then at some point, you know, Tesla was making headway, uh, headwaves with um, the solar roof product, which is like a roof that looks like a regular roof, but has solar cells embedded within I've it. I've seen that. You have examples yeah. of it at your office. Yeah, it's yeah. so cool. It is really neat. And, um, and so I kept on bugging my account manager and eventually he was like, Mo, as always, your timing's impeccable. We're doing our first training next week in LA. So my partner and I got on a, on a plane and flew out to California. Uh, we were part of the uh, first uh, group of certified installers nationally to get accredited on the Tesla solar roof product. Um, that was right before COVID hit. So it was a very uh, timely um, you know, stage for us to get into that product line. And so now we service the full Tesla ecosystem. Whenever they have a new uh, product that they wanna pilot or test or beta, typically we're the first people that they call. Um, we move a ton of uh, battery volume. So most solar companies don't really wanna mess with batteries because they are more complicated, they're more technical, there's more engineering required. Uh, whereas we have what's called a 70% attachment rate. So for every 10 solar systems that we install, seven of them have batteries attached to them. And if you said that to the majority of solar companies, they think you're crazy 
because they just want to slap glass on the roof and get out and go to the next and go to the next. It's a lot easier, a lot less permitting requirements. So there's, again, um, blessings and challenges to everything in life. Uh, it's been great to be a big Tesla partner, but at the same time, uh, we've had to incur a lot of expensive lessons over the years, uh, teaching jurisdictions and teaching utilities on uh, how these systems operate and you know what National Electric Code says about them and how they interpret it and how we interpret it. So it's been fun and uh, Tesla's been a great partner. Uh, we've had our ups and downs just like any relationship in life, um, but uh, more ups than downs. And, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, it's been rock solid and, and uh, we, we, we love uh, the fact that we can continue to deploy Tesla products out in the world and back them with our exceptional service. I love that. And I want to go back to something you said that I think is so very important because you said you, the gentleman said, as always, your timing is impeccable. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think that's true because people <laughs> might also call that lucky. And I don't think mm. you're lucky at all. I think you're mm. very intentional. Yeah, very much. And, and, and persistence is key. You know, I think mm -hmm. persistence is a, is a key uh, character uh, character trait for entrepreneurs. You know, if just because you get told no once doesn't mean the answer is no for forever. And so um, I would ask him literally like once a month, when am I going to get into this? When am I going to do this? And so, um, yeah, timing timing is is uh, a very, very big in the world of entrepreneurship. And, uh, you know, even in the world of careers, you know, you might look for a career today or tomorrow, but it may not be available till next month or the year, yep. year after. Took me 20 years. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Where do you see the energy ecosystem going in the next five years? Yeah, I think solar will be ubiquitous. I think like 50 years ago, uh, HVAC units didn't exist. And now every home that you go into has an HVAC unit. Sometimes two. Sometimes two, sometimes five <laughs> in Texas. So um, I think in the future, you'll see solar cells everywhere. You'll see them on uh, windows. You'll see them on doors. You'll see them on fences. You'll see them on cars. Um, I think that um, people will recognize the importance of um, solar energy and the fact that we have this incredible uh, ball of gas that comes up, you know, uh, 270 days a year here in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, that produces uh, a ton of power for uh, you to energize everything in your life. And so I think uh, we'll continue to see solar cells be integrated in everyday products uh, and, um, and, and the use case for it will become more and more uh, uh, critical uh, considering uh, the retirement of gas plants, the retirement of coal plants, mm -hmm. uh, the retirement of a lot of these what they call base, uh, you know, power plant generation, um, you know, sources. Solar will just become more and more important. You're already seeing it. You know, there's there's more solar uh, coming online year in and year out. I remember one of the things that got me into solar in 2014, uh, I was listening to uh, Secretary of State at the time, John Kerry, talking about climate change and how it'll present one of the biggest economic opportunities that the world's ever seen. And then I, I remember looking into solar and um, the United States generated 1% of its energy mix from the sun. Mm. And so I was like, well, there's probably going to be a ton of growth that happens here. Yep. And so um, I think batteries will become more and more efficient, more and more dense, uh, power dense, lower in price, uh, more affordable to uh, the average citizen. Uh, and as we continue to see our power grid incur, you know, failures, uh, people, uh, you know, experiencing all these storms. I mean, it literally, this has been one of the most active storm seasons I can remember in recent history. Just the last month. I mean, just the last couple of <laughs> weeks, crazy. last month. It is. And uh, the wind gusts, I mean, they're becoming uh, stronger than ever, more active, uh, more frequent. Uh, and there's real uh, risks associated with it. A lot of people will be like, they'll blame it on the grid. You know, what's wrong with the grid? Like, let's fix this. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is the, the grid was built uh, with a 50-year shelf life, um, you know, and uh, that 50-year shelf life is 20 or 30 years past due. And since then, electric cars have come out into the world and cryptocurrency and all the mining associated with it, uh, data centers and on the huge yep. power load that, you know, power center or data centers require. And so the grid isn't, wasn't designed to um, support our current lifestyles. And so um, more and more people will uh, become conscious and aware of that. And as they do, 
uh, they'll be calling us hopefully to to install distributed solar and battery systems on their house and just like 50 years ago 20 years ago everyone had a landline coming into their home uh, this is no different everyone now has a cell phone yep so uh, things are moving away from you know centralized to more distributed and uh, this is part of that distributed architecture i love that and i think that I still have so many questions, but unfortunately we're almost out of time. Yeah. So I am going to ask you one of our VIP questions to wrap up this session. All right. And I'm trying to decide which one. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going with the Mars one just because yeah, you were yeah. kind of stewing on that earlier. Let's do so. it. Yeah. So people are things. So if you were chosen yeah. to be one of the first mm. colonists on Mars, okay. what three things or people mm. would you take with you? Wow. Um, can I, can I pick more than like, can I say my family? Is that one or is that three? So yeah. <laughs> see what I mean? It's yeah. a very broad question. Yeah. yeah I think, uh, I would take, um, you know, my wife and kids. I'll right. let you lump them together. All right, lump, l- l- and, my, and, my, and my brothers and sisters and, and parents. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, Give uh, an I'm, inch. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, I'd probably take a soccer ball. It's okay. my kind of first love. I love I love the sport. I could probably just juggle a soccer ball all day long and and uh, and keep myself busy. Um, and then um, I don't know. I'm thinking like maybe an air fryer, but I don't know what I'd cook up there. <laughs> no, what you yeah. need? I just got <laughs> yeah. this um, convection <laughs> toaster oven that does oh, air fry, convection oh, toast, yeah. everything. That I'd would take that. And then, and then I'd find a way to. I'd find some food on Mars to to be able to to cook it. So <laughs> I mean, survival, right? Survival, survival. is the fittest. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's a that's a great question and and. Um, yeah, hopefully my answer is satisfactory there. Although, like you said, there's no wrong answer. Someone answers. in the you take a mile. <laughs> no wrong answers. How do people find you? Especially like if they want to be a part of this great company and they want to maybe get a job with you. Maybe they need to call you once a month, every month, till the time is right. Yeah, uh, like I said, persistence is great. Uh, email us. Uh, go to our website. Call in. We uh, walk into our office. We have a very approachable office uh, staff that loves walk-ins we have a lot of people that just walk in and and apply for a job and say that they they saw us online or they saw one of our trucks driving by and they were attracted to uh the brand name or whatever have you so um you know check us out on social media we're on uh very active on youtube uh instagram linkedin uh facebook um yeah come 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 you know be uh, uh in person with us we like to we like the, the human to human connection and, and we want to see you, we want to meet you, we want to shake your hand. I love that. This has been so enlightening and I just, I love your energy. I love the conversation too, we Casey. had the other day, but I've really enjoyed this conversation as well. But, yeah. And I just have one last thing to say to you. Sure. You are a VIP. I'm a VIP now. Let's go. Very important person. <laughs> and Casey, thank you for everything you do. You're an incredible networker, incredible connector, incredible human being. Um, the things that you do to go above and beyond for your audience, for your clients, uh, it really uh, speaks volumes as, and, and is a testament to who you are mm-hmm. as, as a person and a professional. So um, yeah, anyone out there looking for their next accounting and finance job, make sure to reach out to Casey. Thanks. Yeah. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.